All right, so Tailwind is probably one of the most controversial libraries out there. Either you like it or you don't. Now, personally, I think it's great, and I nearly use it in every one of my projects, even my most recent application that I'm working on, Web Dev Daily. So if you're looking to improve your front end skills for free, be sure to check that out. Every day we release a new design to code challenge with a Figma file for you to convert into code using a built-in browser editor. And you can even use Tailwind CSS. So if you're interested, you can find a link down below in the description. So anyways, chances are if you click on this video, you either like Tailwind, you are new to the library, or maybe you're on the fence about using it. So in this video, I want to show you three of my favorite tools that I personally use to make using Tailwind even better. Are you ready? Let's get started. First, we have a VS Code extension that I'm pretty sure most of you watching this video will know about, but I still wanted to include it for anybody that might be new to Tailwind watching this video, and that is Tailwind CSS IntelliSense. It's an amazing extension that makes working with Tailwind a breeze. So the first thing that this extension has is something called autocomplete. And what this does is it offers you intelligent suggestions in a dropdown based on what you're typing within the class attribute. And it also provides you a snippet of what that class will be applying. Now the extension also provides linting for potential bugs in your CSS. And for me, the biggest perk of this extension is the hover preview for classes. So how it works is when you hover over a class that you have applied to one of your elements, it's going to give you a preview and it's going to explain what exactly that class is applying. And I find myself using this quite often for pixel related classes such as padding, margin, and even font sizes. So instead of having to guess and check the application to see what that class is doing, or even having to go reference the documentation, you're able to just easily hover over the class and see if it's being applied, which is going to save you a lot of time. And I've been using this extension for nearly a year and a half, and it's definitely a must have when working with Tailwind. The second tool is another VS Code extension that I actually just started using more frequently, which is called Tailwind Fold. Essentially, this extension will fold long class attributes, making your code, at least in my opinion, a lot easier to read and less cluttered. So the reason this extension was made is probably why I think a lot of people dislike Tailwind itself because you can have these super long class attributes. And there are ways to avoid having these long class attributes. So you could, for example, create some reusable classes, or if possible, you can even componentize your logic. Now, even with this, there are going to be times where you simply just have long class attributes. And I think this extension does a great job and helps fix that issue, at least from a visual perspective. Now, there are a few tweaks that I did make to the settings to go ahead and improve the use of this extension. The first one was setting the threshold for the amount of classes that there needs to be to create what is called this fold. And by default, all of your classes are going to be folded because it is set to zero. So what I did was I didn't really think this is necessary. So I actually set this to five and I think that helps out a lot. And I also went ahead and altered the fold style to quotes. So by default, the fold style is set to all. And what this means is that it's going to hide the entire class attribute. And with the fold style set to quotes, what this does is it's going to then show the class attribute, but it's going to hide all the contents that live within the class attribute. And to me, this just helps you visually see that there's actually a class on the element where when you have it set to all, it's really hard to even tell that there is even a class being applied. All right, so the third and final tool is the use of Prettier with Tailwind to enable automatic class sorting. Now, this has actually been around for quite some time, but it isn't something I feel many people know about, and to me, this is really a game changer. When building out applications styled with Tailwind, I always try my best to organize the classes in a consistent way. And initially, it's not all too difficult to do, but as your application continues to grow, it can become more challenging to remember how exactly you went ahead and organized everything. And then you just end up with a giant mess of classes with no consistency. Now, what this plugin does is it organizes your classes in the same order that Tailwind itself orders them within your bundled CSS. And what that means is that any classes in the base layer are going to be sorted first, followed by classes inside of the components layer, and then finally you have classes in the utilities layer. And utilities themselves are actually sorted in the same way we sort them in CSS, which means that any classes that override other classes are always going to appear later in the class list. And if you do want to learn a bit more about how the classes get organized, I'll leave a link down below in the description to the blog post covering this. 
Now to enable and add this to your project is actually really simple. First, what you're going to want to do is install Prettier and also the Prettier Tailwind plugin. Now, once you have that installed, if you don't already have one, you're going to want to create a Prettier RC file within your project. And then within that file, you're going to want to add an object. And within that object, you're going to create an array for plugins. And within that array, you're just going to want to add the plugin we installed called Prettier Plugin Tailwind CSS. Then as long as you have Prettier set up in your project to automatically format on save, when you save that file, your Tailwind classes should now all be organized automatically. So as you can see, when we went ahead and saved this file, all of our classes got organized in a consistent way. And to me, this not only makes projects more consistent, but it also goes ahead and helps with readability. And one final thing that I do want to point out is that there isn't an actual way to change the order of how the classes get organized. And as the Tailwind team mentions in the blog post that although you may have other stylistic approaches that you may want to use, the auto formatting that is provided with this plugin is probably going to outweigh those which I also agree with. Alright, so I know you went through that pretty quickly, but those are the three tools that I pretty much use on an everyday basis while developing with Tailwind. They've helped me a ton and hopefully they'll be able to help you as well. If you do have any other tools that you use with Tailwind, be sure to let me know down below in the comments as I'm sure they'll be able to help me as well as they'll be able to help other people that are watching this video. Anyways, thank you for watching. If you did enjoy, be sure to leave a like on it down below. Subscribe if you're new here for more content like this and I'll see you in the next one. Take care.